Assemblers Assemble. Yes. So, um, my name is Phil, and this I'm is... Danielle, hello. And we're going to be your hosts for today, as we read off of our phones, obviously. Okay. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, we're a God-free community that celebrates a worldview grounded in evidence and reason. And we invite everyone to join us as we do our best to say it with us. Live better, better help, help often, often, and wonder, wonder more. more. You guys oh, got right. it. But, all right. Well, today's theme is a space for us. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Sunday Assembly is not just some cool, awesome thing that the lovely directors of people in Los Angeles created. It was actually started in London. So today we're going to be hearing from Peppa, Pippa Evans, uh, one of the founders where it started in London, about why and how she created Sunday Assembly. Absolutely. But uh, first, I think everybody needs to get on their feet, and uh, if you're into that sort of thing, and <laughs> dance badly, um, that's okay. Just and that's dance well, you can do that. Anyway. And you can clap on or off rhythm, however you want to do. And um, welcome, Ground Control. So they open us up with a great B-52s classic. Love Shack, baby! <laughs> I loved it. Really? No, stand up. Come on. All right, ready? Stand up. If you see a faded sign on the side of the road that says 15 miles to the Love Shack. Love Shack, yeah, yeah. I'm heading down the Atlanta Highway. Looking for the love getaway. Heading for the love getaway. I got me a car, it's as big as a whale. And we're heading on down to the Love Shack. I got me a Chrysler. Way back in the middle of the field, just a funky old shack, and I gotta get back. Glitter on the mattress, glitter on the highway, glitter on the front porch, glitter on the hallway. Well, the shack is a little old place where we can get together. Next to nothing, cause it's hot as an oven. Old Jack Jimmy's when everybody's moving around and around and around and around. Everybody's moving, everybody's grooving, baby. Folks lining up outside just to get down. Everybody's moving, everybody's grooving, baby. Funky little shack, funky little shack. It's about to set sail. Got me a car, it seats about 20. So come on, bring your jukebox money. The shack is a little low place where we can get together. The shack, baby. The shack, baby. Bang, bang, bang on the door, baby. I 
rock a little louder, sugar. Bang, bang, bang on the door, baby. I can't hear you. Bang, bang on the door, baby. Bang, bang on the door. Bang, bang on the door, baby. Bang, bang. Your what? To roof, rusty. Song. Uh, song. This is a, a great Beatles song. I know you're gonna know this one. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart, then you can start. Hey Jude, don't be afraid, you were made to go out and get her, the minute you let her under your skin, then you begin to make it better. Yeah. 
Control. That was awesome. I also realized that Jude might be a boy. I always thought it was a girl or whatever, but uh, I never I knew. <laughs> it, what is gender? All I know is we are really lucky to have a band that just melts your faces off every Sunday. Yes. Love them. That was awesome. All right. So thank you to everyone who donated clothing and sleeping bags last year, or last year, last month <laughs> for a safe place for youth. That was awesome. We also had two great volunteer events with them. 28 of you came out to help sort donations and organize their drop-in center, so thank you. As well as at another event, we were able to um, purchase, prepare, and serve over 80 hot lunches. So good job, you guys. It's awesome. For sure. Uh, also, um, we're accepting clothing on behalf of the Los Angeles LGBT <laughs> Center. And um, we'll continue this drive throughout the month. So if you forgot this week, um, come to the West Side Assembly, West Side. which is in a really cool space and also has a bunch of really great people. And you think you uh, can see ground control again, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And um, so, yeah, please bring some gently used uh, casual professional clothing and new underwear because nobody wants your old chonies. <laughs> um, and new socks and new shoes. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you were signing in, we've got some milestones. Yes, actually, let me get them. So as you were signing in, somebody might have talked to you about any major life events that came up that uh, we might want to share. So let's, uh, let's share out some of our milestones. All right. So this past Friday, Alan Shinkman celebrated 70 years of being vertical. Whee! Hey. Happy birthday. Brilliant. Um, so Matt and Monica are celebrating their 16th wedding anniversary. Wow. That's, uh, I've, had, I've had scotch that's younger than that, and it was delicious. Um, also, Raphael is turning 10 years old. This guy. This Woo! dude. You're on decade. Earth Day. Earth Day? Indeed. Awesome. Well, if anyone else has anything that they'd like to share. I think we've got one more. Oh. This is, we got Oh. Bobby Kerr, how do we say that? Kirkhart. Kirkhart. He celebrates 75 years on Earth on April 16th. Woo! So he's vertical too. He's <laughs> all you vertical folks out here. All right. Um, so I'm going to go around to the microphone if anyone has something they want to share and didn't get a chance to write it down. If I know how to turn this on and can see you. Yeah. If any of you guys remember Phil Donahue, where he'd run around. So turn it on, too. Thank you. Um, so, as. I'll get Sorry. away from the speaker. <laughs> Stand well away. <laughs> um, my, um, my sisters and then my mother came to visit um, here in LA, and it went wonderfully. Um, and uh, my sisters actually performed here at the last assembly. Well, not here, but anyways. And it was really amazing, and everybody was so welcoming. Um, but the trip was really great, and um, it was really powerful for me to reconnect with my family. And uh, since then, um, I, who have always been notoriously horrible at uh, reaching out and calling people and talking to my loved ones, even when I think of them or should, have been doing much better and did like a Skype story time. I wasn't there for it, but with Nana, with my mom, with the kids, um, and yeah, so I'm feeling really reconnected with my family and hoping to keep that going. So, yeah. Reaching out, it's a hard lesson to learn. 
Uh, we celebrated Easter for the first time with our, our kids, which with our three-year-olds. Uh, we didn't think that we would do Easter because I remember it being a candy holiday, but we did a cool scavenger hunt with clues that they were really into. And they're only three, so they didn't know that the Friday, five days after Easter, when I was actually ready uh, to get all that stuff together, <laughs> wasn't Easter. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyone else? Good, bad, ugly, awesome. Going once, going twice. There you go. All right. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Hello. Sunday Assembly. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge everybody for making it here because I know what it takes to get out of bed on Sunday, <laughs> deal with traffic, however, you know, all the stuff. So props, it's a big deal. Um, and then the milestone that I am sharing is connecting with my cousin who's really religious and who likes to share that part of her life with me a lot, which is challenging because, <laughs> because I'm here, which means that I don't like that much, that part of her life that much. But um, she's one of the best people I know, which is great. Uh, and we've been through a lot of the same things recently in life and we really enjoy each other's company, which I find amazing. And mostly, the last time we were talking, which I think was last week, I was saying, I was acknowledging her uh, commitment to making her dreams come true. She's in a nursing program, and it's exactly what she wants to do. And her mother was a nurse, and my mother was a nurse. And she was talking about how challenging her schedule is, which it's very tight, and she's dealing with a serious health issue. And I just was saying, you know, you've already won just by being enrolled in the program and going to the classes. She was telling me that she barely passed one of her midterms because she didn't know it was happening. And she got a 77, which normally for people like us is not very good, but considering the circumstances, I was like, that's, that's good. 77, those are good numbers. Two sevens, girl. <laughs> and. And she was listening, and then right when I finished, she goes, I really like the way you talk to me about what I'm doing and how you acknowledge that. And that, that was the best part of the conversation. And then, of course, we were just like, no, you're great, no, you're great, no, you're great. And so, considering my experience with the rest of my very religious family, I feel like that's one of the best things that's happening in my life right now. So. Just wanted to share that with everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Finding things to appreciate in other people we might not have a lot, everything in common with. Anyone else? Nothing's too silly or too sad. Okay. All right. You know, one, uh, one thing I do in traffic is I call my family. That's like how I, I use the traffic time creatively. It's like, you're gonna be nice. stuck in traffic anyway, so I just call <laughs> them up well. and, and bother my family. I've started to do that as well. My mom's like, why do you call me so often now? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this portion of the assembly, if you are a child or have children or just wanna, I don't know, play with glitter, you can meet up with Helena somewhere. Oh, indeed. with Amy, if you are a, a youngin. Or want, are you there. youngin at heart? Okay, Everybody's cool. back there, all right. Great. Well, I'm gonna go back there. <laughs> he just wants to I, didn't see I, I don't like glitter. It's bad for the environment. I just read they, that. They have, a Burning Man has glitter town, so they have like edible, biodegradable glitter. <laughs> Should tell you about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so as we mentioned before, um, Pippa is the founder, one of the founders of Sunday Assembly, as well as a musical comedian. I wanna know about that more. Um, an improviser. And um, so, she hosted our very first assembly in 2013, but since then, it's been kind of a struggle to get her here. Absolutely. Um, I've actually, I keep talking to her on uh, Facebook, so I keep wanting to like meet her in person, and I was really excited that I was gonna get to meet her, but I don't get to meet her. So, or have some kind of a dialogue back and forth with her that doesn't take, you know, a long time because time she's zone. across an ocean. Um, so we asked her to come speak at Salah West, um, in January, she had an audition. We asked her again in March, but she was on stage, trying to get her in April, if, and um, we asked to see if we could screen this TED talk that she did, um, because the suspense was killing us. 
And the internet is super powerful, so we have sort of Pippa, who I still can't have a dialogue back and forth with, but we have sort of Pippa, and, and uh, we're also going to do kind of a um, ending um, discussion amongst ourselves. So study the video very closely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but without um, further ado. If so you're a, if you're a twit, um, you can find her on Twitter. Yep, that too. Or social media. Yep, all the things. That's me when I was 14. When I was 14, I had a really big crush on this guy, like a massive crush. Uh, he was like my best friend. He was a rebel and a rule breaker, and I wouldn't shut up about him. Yet my crush was Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> I, I, I really loved him, like hashtag JC is well fit, hashtag gotta love a beard, hashtag hot profit. Oh. Every Sunday I would go to church and I would uh, learn about this amazing guy and how uh, I could be more like him, how to live a full and meaningful life. And I loved church. I loved church. I loved this place that was full of people that, that cared about me, that, that were nice and kind and supportive. These people that supported me, who understood me, who lived a life like me. We had shared values. They, they loved me even when I was annoying, and I loved them even when they were annoying. Church allowed me to be a part of something bigger than myself, to be a part of a community. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I read it every day. Or at least I try to, but some of it's pretty heavy going. <laughs> but then, when I was about 17, I stopped sort of feeling it with Jesus. You know, like uh, suddenly we weren't getting on so well anymore. Like whenever I pray, it felt like no one was really there. We weren't really talking as much. And then suddenly I started to question what I'd believed all my life. Suddenly the thing that I'd believed to be 100% true wasn't such a sure thing. And the doubts got bigger and the gap got wider. And soon I felt like I couldn't really go to church anymore because I didn't really believe in God or really understand what God was and so I stopped reading the Bible and I didn't know if Jesus loved me because I didn't know if Jesus was real and so I left my church and I left my happy enclave and I stopped singing the praises of the Lord and I was sad and I was lonely. I tried to find another church over the next couple of years, different churches, hoping that Jesus maybe had just escaped me in that one building. But as I was there, I sat at the back feeling like a fraud. The words when I tried to speak the Lord's Prayer wouldn't come out of my mouth. And when I took communion, I just didn't really want that free wine. And as a British person, <laughs> you know it's over if you don't want free booze. It was difficult. I tried to find a space, but there didn't seem to be a space for people who didn't believe in God, but did want to uh, work in the community, did want to live a full and happy life, did want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. I tried atheist meetups, but a lot of them seemed to be about campaigning against religion uh, and finding uh, ways to mock religious people. And having been mocked a lot when I was religious, oh, here comes Mary Magdalene again. Uh, yeah, and also uh, not being quite sure where I felt with the whole God thing, uh, it wasn't really a space for me. Why isn't there a sort of church for people who do not believe in God? I lamented. And then I went to university, and then I went to start working, and then I stopped celebrating life, and I just started getting on with it. Fast forward 13 years, and I'm now a full-time comedian and improviser. It's 2012, and I'm driving down the M4 on my way to a comedy gig, and in the passenger seat of my car is fellow comedian Sanderson Jones. Sanderson is like a big, beardy sunshine. Uh, he really, really looked like someone, but I couldn't quite figure out who. Uh, uh, but then I realized it was Barry Gibb. Uh, uh, 
I started telling Sardison about my wedding. I'd recently got married, uh, and my mum was really keen on us having a church wedding uh, because, although not exclusively for this reason, she wanted to, and I quote, wear a big hat. <laughs> my husband and I wanted a more secular uh, arrangement, so we were trying to find a way that we could balance tradition and ritual, but also uh, without the religious bits. Um, We'd been to quite a few non-religious weddings, but they'd been quite stark, sort of so ripped out of ritual that it was less an important milestone in your life, more a witnessing of a pen scratching on paper. So we got married in Wilton's Old Time Music Hall, which is a building in East London that is steeped in history. Uh, my friends improvised a choral piece as I walked down the aisle, arm in arm with my dad. We shared our vows in front of friends and family, and instead of a hymn, we sang, When I'm 64. And everybody sang along. It felt traditional but modern, new but old, secular but rich in ritual. And my mum got to wear her hat. Saunderson was very excited about this, and he said uh, that he had the same feeling about carol concerts, uh, how much he loved them. But as a committed uh, atheist, he couldn't get along with the central story. But what he could get along with was a celebration of family, a time for thankfulness, and reflecting on a year that has passed. And then, we don't really know how this bit went, but one of us said to each other, I've always wondered if you could do church without the God bit. And the other one said, so have I. And so we decided to give it a go. As we drove up to the Comedia Comedy Club in Bath, we decided to attempt to create church without God. How hard could it be? The answer is really frickin' hard, yeah? <laughs> Especially when you're two comedians who do not know what they are doing. It turns out it takes a lot of time and energy uh, and effort to even begin to dissect what humans need uh, and what we can learn from what has gone before. And so we decided to go with what we did know. So we combined our comedy knowledge with my church knowledge and we created an order of service or set list, if you will. Uh, <laughs> instead of hymns, we had pop songs. Instead of a uh, sermon, we had a, we had a speaker. Uh, instead of a reading, we had a, a poem. Uh, and instead of prayer, we decided to have a, a silent moment of reflection. We decided to call it Sunday Assembly. Uh, and together we came up with a motto, live better, help often, or wonder more. That is, look to your insides, look at the needs around you, be inspired by the world. We found a venue, a deconsecrated church in North London. Seemed like an appropriate place to have it. I was a bit worried it was a bit big, but Sanderson reassured me that we'd definitely be able to fill it. We booked a speaker, we found a band, we sent out a press release. Suddenly, Sanderson was a bit nervous that maybe we couldn't fill it, so I reassured him that we definitely could. We alternated between the doubter and the encourager. On the 3rd of January 2013, we had our first Sunday assembly and over 200 people turned up. It was amazing. We sang, uh, we sang uh, Bon Jovi and Queen. Uh, we, our speaker spoke about how important stories are to humans, and loads of people stayed behind after to drink tea and also to offer their help. We'd hit on something, something that rang true for a lot of people of no fixed belief. It went viral before we'd even closed the doors. The stories went around the internet, and we were dubbed the atheist church. Uh, we started receiving emails from people all over the world as well, some telling us we were going to hell, uh, but most of them telling us that this was exactly what they'd been looking for for their entire lives. What we'd hit upon was a space that was non-religious, not anti-religious. According to a recent study by the National Centre for Social Research, over 50% of the UK now identify as non-religious. And according to Pew Research, about a fifth of Americans also fall into this category. And so what we'd done unknowingly was created a space for these people. Sunday Assembly turns five years old in January, and we now boast a global, uh, global network of around 70 Sunday Assemblies across the world, from LA to Edinburgh, from Manchester to London, from Utrecht, to Canberra. <laughs> that was a strange reference, you're right. Um, these people meet, over 5,000 people meet every month in the name of non-religious community. It's been a mad journey, but we've had highs and lows and everything in between. 
But we're not the only people doing this. Sunday Assembly isn't the only way of creating a non-religious congregation. Uh, there's lots of people, as we've discovered on our journey, doing this around the world. Uh, places like uh, Oasis uh, in Houston, which is a secular congregation very similar to Sunday Assembly. Uh, the Harvard Divinity School now hosts a humanist hub, which is led by Greg Epstein, where they, among other things, lead young people from the Boston area in a sort of mix between a bar mitzvah and a Sunday school, but without the religious bits. Andy Pakula is an atheist minister who works with New Unity, which is a church in North London, where the congregation, a lot of them don't believe in God, but they do believe in good. Casper uh, Takayle. Oh, and we've had a, sorry, <laughs> we've had a protester. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. This is our protester. Um, just one, because obviously when you think about it, there's not really anything to protest. Um, <laughs> and, and he can't have been that angry because he let Sanderson have his picture taken with him. <laughs> Yes, so Casper to Kyle and Angie Thurston say in their paper, How We Gather, the lack of deep community is indeed keenly felt. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among youth. Rates of isolation, loneliness, and depression continue to rise. As traditional religion struggles to attract young people, millennials are looking elsewhere with increasing urgency. And in some cases, they're creating what they don't find. We have countless testimonials of people who've come to Sunday Assembly and said that without it, they wouldn't have had space to grow. I've seen people with crippling anxiety go from hiding at the back of the hall to addressing a 400-strong crowd. I've talked to people who have had to leave their family home because they dared to question the belief system that they were brought up in, who came to Sunday Assembly and found solace there because we told them not whether there was a God or not, but that they were a valuable person, that they had something to contribute. We have couples who come who are both of a different faith who find that Sunday Assembly is a space that they can both enjoy because the Sunday Assembly experience sits alongside their faith rather than forcing them to renounce it. I've met people so lonely that they considered ending their own life, but they found Sunday Assembly and they found community, they found purpose, they found a space. Uh, in a 2012 study, Cockshaw and Choquette demonstrated a link between belongingness and depression, where belongingness was shown to have strong additive links to depressive symptoms. In other words, if you feel like you belong somewhere, you feel less sad. If everyone who felt like they had nowhere to go found that they did have somewhere to go, somewhere like a Sunday assembly, a place that allowed them to be a part of something, something bigger than themselves, that encouraged them to live better, help often, and wonder more. That couldn't be anything other than a good thing, could it? I'm glad I had that crush on Jesus. Hashtag nice man. <laughs> because it allowed me to enjoy community, uh, to experience the good that can come from it, but also the loneliness that comes from not having it, from losing it. And it was that experience that led me to realize we need to create alternative spaces so that people don't have to experience that loneliness or can at least have a respite from it. We need to create spaces, new spaces, in between spaces. There is a space for us. We just have to build it. Thank you. Mike gets stuck in the chair. Well, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like we also need to give a round of applause to the people who help put on this Sunday assembly. Like Pippa mentioned, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of logistics. So thanks to everyone who is leadership for this organization. Indeed. So like Bill mentioned, her Twitter mm -hmm. is here. Check it out. Um, or you can go meet her in person in Edinburgh, Scotland at the uh, annual Sunday Assembly Gathering, which definitely sounds cultish, but um, hey. it's happening. Supreme Le Leader tells us this isn't a cult. <laughs> it's not oh. as cultish. Right. But sure. it's, it's a gathering. It's more as, anyways. Um, but there are um, scholarships. Pretty cool, right? Cool, yeah. There are scholarships available, but you need to reach out to um, Sala Assembly LA at gmail.com if you're interested in attending. They have stipends of up to $500 if you're interested in going. So um, look into it, reach out. Today. Today, because today, it's the deadline's tomorrow. So today. 
Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh, so now we are going to discuss, kind of getting inspired by her uh, talk. Um, so we're going to break out into discussion groups. So there are certain volunteers who have signs, whoop, like this one. And then you can go to the person whose topic you want to discuss. So pick one of the five, yeah, I can count, one, two, three, five, um, groups that you would like to, or one of the five topics to discuss and go to the said volunteer with the sign. Mm -hmm. Or you can just walk around. Yeah, you don't have to participate. It is a, what's? What's the name of that movie? Great, thank you. Uh, I wish I could have that hair, it's so beautiful. So, we're gonna have the discussion leaders just give a short little blurb um, about what their topic was and maybe a summary of what they talked about and any insights that came up. So, anyone? You! You wanna start, Fletcher? that um, sometimes people have helped people who are homeless or had uh, drug problems or whatever, and then found that person was ungrateful and, and they could feel personally hurt by how much they did. Uh, we also talked about the idea of how much money can we really give when there's so many people with such huge resources and what differences are a few pennies really make. But I think the consensus at the end was that we feel it makes a difference to us to be helping other people and that the biggest differences we make are where we personally get our hands dirty and get involved, um, sometimes in people around us, uh, but also we were talking about how it would be a good thing for Sunday Assembly to maybe focus on one thing a month, maybe get a speaker in to talk about that thing so that we can all feel that is our focus, as opposed to maybe having so many different things that there isn't a, a center of gravity on. Thank you. Um, so mine was uh, rites of passage, should we uh, incorporate them? And it seemed to be a, a resounding yes. <laughs> um, everybody really liked the idea. Um, we came up with, uh, there were some great suggestions like um, uh, something at the, at the age of seven, age of reason, and teenagehood. There were some great suggestions of like, um, you know, three hours on their own for the first time, then rejoin the family and talk about it, or for the teenager planning their own party. Um, but uh, also that weddings, if we had efficients and stuff like that, um, a good source of income for Sunday assembly, which is a really great point. Um, uh, I asked if anybody had any concerns, and there were none, really, except for, you know, uh, not making sure that, uh, you know, there was no scripted, per se, that everybody who might have a ceremony or choose to uh, um, include Sunday assembly in a celebration or something, um, that it would incorporate their beliefs, that there would be no, um, well, dogma, just like how Sunday Assembly is. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, a great one from Chris and Heather, who are actually new, um, was uh, they are a young couple. They just moved to L.A. Yay! Where'd you go? Where are you guys? Yay. There they are. <laughs> um, and uh, they've also become non-religious, um, but they are, are not planning to get married. Um, and they're young and they just moved here and they kind of felt the lack of, you know, their parents got married and they had a registry and they had this uh, ritual that incorporated an actual structure of support that is sort of lacking for a large part of the population who doesn't want to do that or isn't ready or doesn't subscribe to those kinds of belief systems. Um, and so that was a great idea from them to have something like that where it's not even you know a, a necessary monetary or gifts or anything but even going you know mm -hmm. um, uh, Chris said his father taught him how to do minor repairs on his car um, and his mom gave him a list of easy recipes which are like little things that you don't really think of but are kind of huge when you're transitioning from living at home and and also college and you know you made a great point of you know people who are religious uh, going to college 
75%, was that the statistic you said? Um, leave non-religious. So not only are they leaving their families in a lot of cases, but they're also leaving an ingrown community that they've been raised in, and possibly without the skill set to find a new community. Um, so that's a great way of possibly helping them to set up their lives and, you know, find us too. Um, and I think that's, and of course funerals, wake, um, baptisms, naming ceremonies, dedication, retirement, all kinds of really great ideas. So, so perhaps yeah. maybe it'd be like a, a framework or a guideline, not necessarily like a playbook, a scripted playbook on these things, but yeah, more of um, a guideline. Yeah, I, th I, th I think at, at this point it'd be, uh, might uh, talk to uh, Monica, who <laughs> said she would be willing to be a part of a committee. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> um, to possibly, yeah, brainstorm some, some framework or some, something. And I think, the, I don't know if it's just the Humanist Association, but they have something called Life Celebrants. So you get like certified to marry people and not Ian be Dodd religious. Ian Dodd and Margo. What? Mm -hmm. Ian Dodd and Margo are both. Oh. That's one of the, one, we've actually had discussion about rites of passions before on the board. Oh. And we've been wanting to kind of touch base with the community and sort of see how, how everybody feels about it. And... Oh, well, you so, get married yeah. by then. <laughs> uh, I think we had one more out here. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, how has Sela helped you uh, live better? One of, the, uh, one of the foundations from this was finding a community um, and of like-minded people or even people that you disagree with, but it's, uh, but it's welcoming, it's open, gives the opportunity uh, to learn more and to feel comfortable. Uh, one of the other main parts uh, that Sal has helped people is the, promoting the idea of evidence base, of inquiring minds, of looking for uh, how the world is changing instead of just uh, hearing something and believing it, of looking further into the world uh, for how things work. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of our assemblers uh, has a young child, and the child's been uh, brought up in this community and has gotten a lot of support from the community that one might get from other more religious communities. But you can have all of the, uh, the wonderfulness of other people and uh, learning values and having support um, through Sunday Assembly, and that has been of a great help in this community. Do you want to go? Oh, we have... Oh. Am I, am I last or do we have I'm one? You can be second to last or last. Do you I, I'll, be, I'll be second to last. Well, okay. I, I met with the, uh, the first timers here, which is great. Got a lot of, a lot of first time people and thank you guys so much for coming. Um, yeah, uh, and we, we basically reflected the same thing that uh, Pippa was talking about, which was like that need for a community and being involved with, with a larger group and a, a group that might not be in your, your little age bubble or, or gender bubble or, or whatever sort of bubble you're in. Something a little bit broader and somebody to have your back during difficult times or good times or uh, the, the times in between. And um, that was the, the primary reason why everybody was here, the first timers were here, was looking for that community. Yeah. So welcome guys, I hope you can find what you're looking for here. We are a group of people with a wide variety of skills and, and abilities and talents, and we, we can help you and you can help us. We can work together. There's actually, there's some seriously cool, talented people. I'm just like learning things constantly. Like, how do you do that? What? Right, you, you have that moment where it's like, I'm not sure I'm cool enough to actually hang out with you guys. But yeah. I'm here anyway. <laughs> actually. Um, so I had the old timers or people who've been here uh, a few more times than their first, whatever. Um, and our uh, conclusion was pretty much the same. It's like, why not attend a place that is literally created to support you and encourage uh, bettering your life and giving you opportunities to do good and to meet people and to connect. It's like, there's, there's no, there are no bad things that come from that. So people come back and we're dabbling in different, um, people also just come back as a means to explore different ways of connecting with others. They've tried different churches and different, uh, they all came from different backgrounds, the people in my group. And so it was interesting. And uh, they're just like, yeah, it's a community. That's why we, that's why we're here. Absolutely. Well, I guess uh, we'll take it away again. Um, we there? usually have a, a moment of silence and quiet reflection, but paradoxically, we're going to have a song about 
silence. <laughs> so, little little duo, Simon and Garfunkel. We like to rock here. Yes. Yeah. It's so. like, uh, you gotta have Simon and Garfunkel. That's, I'm, I'm sorry, I stand firm <laughs> on this. Can't have Hall and oat, no oats. You can't have peanut butter and no jelly, ham, no burger. Simon and Garfunkel, sounds of silence. <laughs> I'm more of a Garfunkel and oats kind of person <laughs> myself. What? Um, please feel free to sing along with this. So by all means, feel free to sing along with this. I mean, Don sorts your shit out. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need that too. So, let's see. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping. Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains within the sound of silence When restless dreams I walked alone There are streets of cobblestone the halo of a knee street lamb I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed by the flash of a neon light Split the night and touch the sound of silence And in the naked light I saw Disturb the sound of silence. Fools that I, you do not know. Silence like a cancer grow. Hear my words that I might reach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. And my words hurt like silence. This awesome pose it's kind of like this and you reach back and, and you like <laughs> grab your wallet and then you you take out some money and uh, there's some gonna be some, some folks walking around would be. With, with boxes and uh, square readers uh, if you're not into uh, cash donations it's a cashless economy mm -hmm. this costs money uh, we have to rent the hall we have to um, permits, insurance, the website. Absolutely. So if you would like to uh, encourage the growth of a space where people don't need to subscribe to a certain dogma in order to feel a sense of community and support and positivity. It's also tax deductible. Oh, I forgot about that. It is, yeah. 
Okay, okay. Um. And uh, ground control is, uh, ground control needs beer, guys, so let's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I should join ground control then. I, <laughs> I believe I've lost my place here. Hold oh. on. All right. There you go. Okay. Don't forget that you can make it even easier by becoming a monthly donor. Please become a monthly donor. It pops right out of your bank account. Super easy. You get a cool green name tag like I've got. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll eventually shame you into it if you don't have it's, your, your it's green name tag. Also, um, there's a fun thing that they get to do. There is a fun thing that you get to do. That's right. Um, it's a, a French benefit. <laughs> I've oh, heard of that. A fringe benefit. fringe benefit. I thought it was French. Yeah. No, we all get to go. We, we can do a private uh, Sala JPL tour, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Pasadena. In Pasadena, well, or, or uh, Flint Ridge, La Cunada. I'm not sure. Far anyway, away. it's JPL. They build crazy stuff there to send to other planets. And uh, if you haven't been on a, a tour, if you haven't been to JPL, you really should go. And uh, that's something that uh, we're going to try to lure you with. Yeah. Most importantly, regardless of how you're able to give, either with your time as a volunteer or attending our um, help often events or clubs, or if it's by donating, thank you so much. And um, now it is time for, oh, yeah. mm. oh, I almost stole your thunder. I'm sorry. You, you almost did, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, you, we, can, we can steal each other's thunder. There's enough thunder your to go around Your thunder is happening. Here. It's right now. Indeed. Thunder Down Under? That was a male review. Anyway, um, each meeting, someone shares a personal story about what they're doing to try their best, uh, trying their best to improve themselves, their community, um, and so on. So today, we're going to hear from an assembler who's a SALA um, director, and uh, well also Thanks, one of those people that's way cooler than I am, Amy Boyle. I don't know if I can live up to that, Phil. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I'm Amy, and uh, I've uh, been organizing here for five years, and I've never done a trying our best, so um, it was time. Uh, so sometimes when my uh, mom Le wants to take me down a notch, she likes to remind me that while I was uh, always very bright as a child, I was a really late walker. And I don't, if you don't know, uh, on average, kids, uh, infants, start to walk with, when they're between 9 and 12 months old. Uh, and uh, my kids who were premature still walked at 10 and 11 months. Uh, and on babycenter.com, uh, they uh, remind you that if, if you're really worried about your child, don't worry. Uh, because some perfectly normal children don't walk until they're 15, even 16 months old. Uh, I took my first steps when I was 18 months. Uh, so the doctors, my parents were worried. They took me to the doctors uh, who said I checked out perfectly fine physically, that I just gotten stuck in the cruising phase, and I would uh, sidle around holding on to walls and clutching furniture completely ignoring the outstretched arms of the adults nearby and my parents' increasingly urgent <laughs> calls for me to uh, come, take my hand, <laughs> let me help you. <laughs> I did not want any help. I was going to do it myself. <laughs> and, uh, and in some ways, that has changed, and in some ways, not so much. Um, so I still have fairly strong preferences, but I felt like I got a lot better asking for help. Uh, I think that happens to us when, when someone we love tells us what they need and we appreciate the trust and the strength you know, that, that, that's evident in that and it helps us not, not see that as weakness in ourselves. And uh, I basically ask for help professionally. We've been organizing this team of volunteers for a startup volunteer-driven nonprofit for five years. Uh, incidentally, we have two spots available on the talent committee right now where we vet uh, scout and vet talent. And if you're interested in that, we would love to hear from you. Um, 
but lately I have been going through a, a thing, a medical thing. And uh, it's almost certainly been going on for years. Uh, it's been especially uh, evident the last 10 months or so. And like we all have our things. Uh, for me, this is, it just means a lot of, of migraines and uh, foot pain uh, that I thought was uh, just normal foot pain for a while, but is, is nerve pain that has now started in my hands. Um, and based on the blood work, it's probably autoimmune, and so far it's just a lot of testing like, and a lot of waiting. Like, I'm probably fine. Um, it will probably get better, and um, it might even, there's, there's hope there too, because I might be able to get back to activities that I thought that I had to give up a long time ago, like running and uh, martial arts, like really athletic sex. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but more than anything, it's, it's so much time. Like there's so these giant blocks, like metropolitan city blocks of time spent arguing with insur insurance companies and getting MRIs and going to doctor's appointments and making doctor's appointments and waiting in between doctor's appointments and waiting in pharmacy lines. It's just, it's, un, it's unpredictable. I don't, I don't know what kind of time that I have. So I'm getting better at asking people for help because um, I'm getting a lot more experience and I'm gaining a lot of empathy for people who have dealt and are dealing with uh, much more difficult things and are doing it much more bravely. But like having and accepting extra limitations means that I have to lean hard sometimes on my friends and my family. And that you have to ask for help over and over again. And sometimes you don't know if you're going to be able to make it up to someone, and you don't. Sorry. And sometimes you have to take help from people who don't really want to give it. And it, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> um, but I don't have as many resources to give as I would like, even for the things that I really care about. Uh, for five years. The only Sunday assembly that I missed was the ninth one um, because I was giving birth and I thought that would be a really awkward icebreaker. <laughs> uh, I have asked most of my friends to speak, thank you. Uh, I have asked all of my friends to volunteer, Th thank you. <laughs> um, and I've tried to turn just about every play date and a holiday celebration into a Sunday assembly event. I uh, brought my family to Sunday assembly and um, Sunday assembly is my family. And we have this incredible team of leaders and volunteers, but the director is the one who has to catch the balls, like the one who can't say no. And I can't do it at least for a little bit. Like I am not strong enough and I need help. So my plan is um, to take a little time, a little step away until the conference in May, um, and then come back hopefully in June, and just focus on getting better and spend a little more time with my kids before they start school in July. And I'll still be here as a resource. I just want to shift the center of my universe a little bit and make some more space for me. Uh, this community is really strong. It's in really good hands. It has a solid board with 
some of the best people I've ever worked with and an amazing community, full-time community organizer, Ryan Trout, who is super competent and has my back always. Um, and some of those strong preferences that I mentioned earlier might make space for uh, some new ideas and different innovations. Uh, I just, I have to let go of the walls for a little bit and, and stop clutching at the furniture. And so I'm just asking for your help in understanding, um, especially those of you who have helped so much, because I know this is asking for more. And I see you, and I appreciate you. And I'm asking if, if you can, for just a while, say yes, if you're able um, to help. I'm Amy, and I definitely don't have it figured out. Uh, yet, but I am trying my best. I love you guys. All right. I'm always so impressed with how strong and how vulnerable people who come up here and speak are. It's like, oh. oh I didn't know Amy was going to make me cry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that is one of my favorite parts of the assembly because uh, we do get to learn about members of our community and help each other out, um, which is what the overarching theme of this, uh, this whole assembly seems to be about. And uh, that's self-care, which doesn't always involve chocolate and bubble baths. Sometimes <laughs> self-care is paying your bills and catching up and, you know, getting stuff done so that you can actually be helpful. Yeah. Um, help yourself. But if you have um, anything you might want to uh, talk about, if you want to sh share and your do your, try your best story, um, communicate with us uh, with, uh, I don't know, smoke signals or war drums or bagpipes. I guess you could also, like, call us or yeah. use the email or... Insta, I don't know. Yeah, talk to us in what face to face. But yeah. Please, please let us know if yeah. you'd be interested in uh, sharing. Yeah. And um, you can be super vulnerable if you'd like, but if you want to be lighter, that's okay too. For those who haven't been here before, it doesn't necessarily get that intense. It could just be that, you know, you're always cussing, off, cussing people in the car and you're like, I'm going to try my best to not be that person. That's fine. That is still a goal that we are all proud of you for. So however little, however big, feel free to share. Indeed. Uh, well, I guess... You know, this is uh, my, my cue cards say that uh, I'm supposed to have some MC remarks. <laughs> um, but it, I guess that's us. right back to, to what I said before is uh, that community and, and self care. The, the takeaway for me for this and, and what I always try to do that makes me feel better is to just reach out to people. We, we have nothing in this world but each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm strongly convinced that. Humanity has this great potential to do impossible things. We as humans have created elements that do not exist. We have landed on other worlds. We have <laughs> sent probes others. to the farthest reaches of, of the galaxy. We have cured numerous diseases. We did not do this on our own. We did not do this by being islands. We did this yeah. by relying on each other and I'm getting choked up <laughs> so but it's it's a beautiful thing yeah and I like a couple people mentioned in their milestones too about how they're trying to reach out to their family and make those connections kudos feel free to continue to do that here um, but yeah really drives home how important all that is so um anyways moving on from our, our rant connect with people <laughs> yes, to it <laughs> indeed let's uh <laughs> let's throw that on a bumper sticker <laughs> um but next week we will be hearing from Dedeker Winston on a uh, much sexier topic, literally, uh, non-monogamy for non-majors. And uh, the theme is when more than two are gathered. So thanks, Amy, for that. To go back to that athletic sex thing, <laughs> can you get Maybe. a medal in that? Do they have like? We should ask her about it. Hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, April 15th and then May, May 13th, we are back here. So we're still alternating. Awesome that we're able to do that and have two assemblies. Um, between now and then, if you're looking for something to do, we're always up to something. Cute bunch of things. Game nights and movies and 
pub crawls and trivia and lots of fun things. Um, one of the things we can highlight is a Saturday social March for Science on April 14th, downtown LA. Um, I'm sure there are more details online. As oh, well it's as so much oh, fun. Have you been? Uh, no, but I, I understand that it is so much fun. <laughs> I have t I've talked to people who've been, okay. and I'm going to go this time. You're in the know. All right. And um, as we mentioned, we helped twice before with Safe Place for Youth. Um, but if you like, didn't get an opportunity or you'd like to do so again, we will be joining them again on May 2nd and 5th. And I'm not sure exactly what we'll be doing, but probably serving food or organizing their goods and just getting to meet the wonderful people that work there. So, yeah. And uh, I think that's it. Everything, you can find this and more information at sundayassemblyla.org. So, and also at the community table, there are some brochures and flyers. So get on that. Well, I guess oh, we have um, one more song from Ground Control. Um, what about lunch? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to talk about lunch. We're, we, lunch is the best part of Sunday Assembly. I'm not going to lie. And because I'm a big fat guy, I like to eat. And um, we like to it's drink beers pumped. and wines and eat sandwiches. And this time, we're going to be meeting up at the uh, Mendocino Farms on Santa Monica and La Brea. It's not actually in Mendocino. But <laughs> this restaurant is called Mendocino Farms, and it's on uh, Santa Monica and La Brea. Kind of that away. Huh? Whoop, I'm going to fall off the stage. Don't, don't do that. Right. And, uh, yeah, so let's, let's stand up. Let's, uh... yeah. Also, can I point out Ben with his black bare f painted toenails? And it, bare dude, I love it. When he takes off his shoes, he's about to rock, man. It's he's like Bruce serious. Lee when he takes off his shirt. It's, it's the, this is the Bruce Lee thing. <laughs> Please keep your shirt on, Ben. <laughs> All right, one last song for you, for the inner girl and in all of us, and I just wanted to say it's sad how this song is still relevant, so for all of the girls out there and all of the guys, please just you know, sing it from your heart, because <laughs> fuck you, Trump. <laughs> pink ribbon off my eyes I'm exposed and it's no big surprise don't you think I know exactly where I stand this world is forcing me to hold your hand cause I'm just a girl oh little know me well don't let me out of your sight oh I'm just a girl oh pretty and petite so don't let me have any rights Oh, I've had it up to here The moment that I step outside So many reasons for me to run and hide I get to those little things I hold so dear It's all those little things that I feel Cause I'm just a girl, I'd rather not be Cause they won't let me drive late at night Oh, I'm just a girl, guess I'm some kind of freak Cause they all sit and stare with their eyes Oh, I'm just a girl, take a good look at me Just a typical prototype <laughs> Girl, lucky me, sweet old 
day. Oh, thanks. Oh, am I on? Thanks, Ground Control. That was awesome. Also, I really enjoyed Monica rocking out over here. She was getting down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Needed to steal some moves. Um, but thanks to Pippa Evans and Ground Control and Amy and KS and all our volunteers and all of you for showing up and being a part of the community that we are trying to have. So, They bring all their stuff. That's a lot of work to put all this together. So, good job, guys. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think that wraps us up, doesn't it? I think yeah. uh, until next time, you guys want to live, live better, better help, help often, often, and wonder, wonder more. more.